Memory Palace is an imaginary location that you are visualizing in your mind where you can store and recall whole concepts, such as glycolysis, Krebs cycle, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium factors, or even a list of random things like what your pancreas will secrete, and you know, that is insulin, somatostatin, glucagon. But really, the main factor about Memory Palaces that really got me hooked, you know, that caught my attention, is that it is effortless to recall spatial memory. So if you imagine yourself, you know, just walking, just close your eyes right now and just walk into your room. You can locate your computer, your bed, your closet, your window. You take advantage of these stations in your palace and incorporate a story that is so exaggerated that you cannot forget that memory. So by using episodic memory, it can be incorporated into your long-term memory. This is superior compared to using your traditional use of flashcards to repetitively look at facts. If you are going to college or professional schooling, don't you think it's the best idea to incorporate what you've learned into your long-term memory even, especially after graduating? Like imagine if you took an exam, you may forget a lot of that material after a few weeks. Wouldn't it be great if you can just remember that for, you know, for years to come? It's why I've been using memory palaces for years. And now, in order to actually make a memory palace, let's get to the, the good part, where we would have to make a mind map, okay? And I use xmindzen, and, you know, these are some examples of my mind maps. And, you know, these mind maps will help you uh, form an organized um, concept of what you're learning, okay? Be sure to understand the concept first before memorizing it okay and and be sure to be organized and so you can see here the uterine wall has three layers and these are the three layers um, and you know these are other examples okay so as soon as you make uh, a mind map you know using X mind Zen which I really do recommend you can now choose a place and I've shown you several places that uh, I've either taken a picture of or a screenshot through Google images or from video games so now you see like some Boku no Hero anime rooms. Uh, you can see that these rooms are pretty unique. And you know, these are all similar in that they are typically rooms. You know, outside of rooms, they, it, it would be typically chaotic. A lot of um, memory veterans recommend that we just pick rooms only because it's less chaotic and that you can actually form a storyline that you can remember. Because if it's the outside world, uh, you may be too overwhelmed with the amount of information that you can place into that that palace okay and so these are IKEA rooms and so forth you can use any of these rooms if you want you can just go to memory palace channel in my discord server and just take whatever you want but now after you chose the place you know if if you noticed every room is different you know if it's too similar then you might feel ghosted or confused you know if you if you made multiple memory palaces, for example, and the, these two different places are similar to each other, you're going to feel confused. You don't want to mix up information that you've recently learned. It's going to mess up your, your train of thought. But make sure also that you have actors, okay? Actors and actresses that you can use as part of your storyline. You know, like, like um, Ninja from Twitch, sorry, Fortnite. Uh, ben Affleck from Batman, Jennifer Aniston, Pikachu, random characters that you've seen in any anime, movies, TV shows, whatever. Okay, and now the fun part is to actually make a story. Make a story that associates your actors and their actions on specific micro stations. Okay, and so if you look over here, we can imagine in this IKEA room that, you know, maybe Ben Affleck is watching TV here while standing, okay, and that's really weird. He's very close to the TV, and then uh, somehow he he falls because a meteorite uh, just fell from the ceiling onto him, and maybe that has some significance to uh, an association of the new information that you've learned. It's going to take some time, but you're going to feel very creative as you keep practicing, all right? And I can't tell you how to make a story exactly. All I can tell you is to make conventions, okay? Make conventions that works with you, all right? And what works for me specifically is to make a storyline that works in a clockwise direction. So like, 
uh, if Ben Affleck is watching TV here again, um, he's going to get knocked down by the Powerpuff Girls uh, who knocked him over, dragged him across to that mirror, and slammed his head onto that mirror. Okay, and he's, he's asking for help. Uh, maybe he's reaching out for these lights over here, pulling it, and actually um, trying to use that as a shield to cover himself from the Powerpuff Girls. And you, you notice that Ben Affleck just moved over there, and then he moved over here. So there is a clockwise direction. All right. And my other conventions involve exterior to interior. So when you look at a mind map, uh, maybe you might have to memorize, for example, the epidermis. Okay, there's five layers to the epidermis, and you know from the outer area is stratum corneum, for example, and you want to memorize from corneum to lucidum to granulosum, spinosum, and basale. And you know I've memorized that through uh, memory palace. So. You, if you notice that I've recalled that without even looking at anything really, uh, you will be impressed by what you can do as well with memory palaces. Now, uh, also, you know, left to right, top to bottom, interior to posterior, those are conventions that I use. But you can use your own conventions as well. But I'm just going to show you these are my conventions. All right. And then, so now that you've finished your memory palace, you should rehearse the story. Okay. Rehearse the story from start to end, but also from end to beginning. Okay. And I'm going to show you some, some rules that people have, have uh, shown to us. So this is Dominic's, Dominic O'Brien's rule of five, where you review immediately, review 24 hours later, one week later, one month later, three months later. I think this is um, too lenient. You know, if you're very serious with your studies, and I would say, I would recommend for you to review each memory palace at least um, three times a week, okay? And three times a week up to the third month. And then after that third month, you can rehearse it maybe once a month up until you realize or you you feel as though it's incorporated into your long-term memory okay and you know you can use Anki or audio recordings of yourself to help with the rehearsal process and so by you know doing all of these techniques you know by rehearsing from beginning to end uh, middle to beginning middle to end you can eventually have this this method of incorporating all of this into your long-term memory and that's the goal right here okay and you know by making a mind map first getting your place incorporating a story with the actors that you've made up you can make a story that you rehearse and then use Anki or audio recordings to help you with the rehearsal process and then there you go you have a fully developed uh, memory palace which may take a lot of time at first you know I've spent um, maybe three four hours make just making one palace and it gets faster if you practice more and more and memory champions really do vouch for this and ever since having memory palaces as my main form of studying I've been receiving 4.0 GPAs ever since uh, if not 4.0, then uh, I could get a B plus, uh, maybe just due to um, issues with understanding the concept. That would be the only issue uh, that you would have in terms of memory palaces. You have to, before memorizing anything, like I said before, you have to understand the concept. And then you put form that concept into a mind map. And then you do the memorization. So I really hope that this helps you and that you have a nice one.